I ain't gonna put the name of the group out there. Do y'all see that third video? Do y'all see what it says? A word on prostitution. They did an hour, 11 minute, 20 second class that prostitution is legal and lawful according to God. And Don't, and that prostitutes are clean. Don't get married, get a prostitute. Black, this is a black Hebrew Israelite group. You can't make this stuff up. And the, you read the comments, or con, con, out of one con. All praises to Yahweh. Basham Yah. I'm like, what the hell? And nobody sees nothing wrong with this. I'm like, yo, these people are freaks. You want to drop F bombs left and right because they're destroying young men and women. Because you got, there's a few sisters going, yeah, yeah, you know, I used to be one. And I see, I'm thinking about going back into that. You can't make this stuff up. A word on prostitution. What are you gonna say? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious. So, if, if prostitution is legal, right? Then that would mean that adultery is legal. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If, if, and according to the BHI, sex is marriage, right? And the, yeah. the doctrine. Mm -hmm. So the men that had sex before her, the men that had sex with her before you, what was he? Her husband, right? According to him. So therefore, you have slept with someone's wife. Yeah. And then you see when someone's wife again, mm -hmm. and again and again. Right. I don't get it. I don't understand that. That's, that's why we say, hey, y'all, y'all, uh, you men, y'all be uh, channel surfing and all that. And you sisters too. Y'all, is the word channel surfing? Window shopping, we call it. You going to get this thing and get it sucked up into the, whatever your lust is, oh, you going to find a video. That's the, they say that the harlots will get in the kingdom before you. That's the scripture they use. But those harlots that Christ was talking about were repenting. Right. That's how they say. That's not what they're saying. No. Wow, you can't make this. Where were you at, Officer Leon? Damn. Oh, give me Genesis 34. No, 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 Bishop. Yeah. Uh, their holiday ain't going to get in the kingdom because that's all white girl. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Watch this. Let me show you something about Dinah. Genesis 34. It's for you independent sisters out there. I call it independent sisters out there, Dinah. Read that. Genesis, wait, verse 1. Yep, one and two. Yes, sir. Genesis 34 and verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of and Dinah, the daughter of Leah, when she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. So he took her and raped her. Because she went, I just want to see the sisters. That's I, that's Dinah's mentality. I just want to hang out and go visit the sisters out here. The women and look what happened she got snatched up and that's what happens and with some situations as bad as it sounds give me Sirach 26 and 9 yeah to prove what you say is true is the sister they just bell out of here they just showed me a picture in our uh, Facebook now back with the nakedness mm. she just posts up you know well, yeah, man, oh, yeah, man, oh, which one of you got the next error to throw in she just left out of here she already posted up that's how you know that this thing is a demonic spirit, man. Your sisters, you cannot hold on to nothing. Man, but guess what? These class going to be good for you today. Read that. Sirach so chapter 26 and verse 9. The whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. A woman, a whore, the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Her eyelids. I want to talk about these women's eyelids for a second. I gotta give. I gotta thank Deacon Abiel for this. Yo, Deacon please, Abiel. please, please, Bishop, please. I know. Please, Bishop. This is Deacon please. Abiel. It's, it's please, just, please. Now, please. some so there's some articles that said it's real. Some say it's, it's fake. But I don't care. It's hilarious. I know. It's yes. hilarious. Yes. Give me the clip, not the clip. I want the thing about eyes. <laughs> that in 1882, London prostitute Gerda Perude, Peridle, Peridle, invented elongated eyelashes or. Cumbrellas. Cumbrellas. Oh, Go ahead. To block semen from getting in working girls' eyes that are worn today as common fashion. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's some funny stuff right there. Block semen. They call them big eyelashes cumbrellas. Now, some articles say it's not true, but I think it's hilarious. I just, I couldn't stop laughing when I read that yeah, thing. I think it's Stu Bishop. You think it's I think <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Officer Leon, where we at? Verse 9. Read again. The whoredom 
of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. Read. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. That's what happened with Dinah. They gave her a little liberty, and she went wandering around and got snatched up and raped. Now, what does it mean, uh, keep her in straightly? Um, where it says, keep her in straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. That's why when we read earlier in Surat, was it 30? It said, hold him to labor. These young girls must have chores. Because the same way a young man, his idleness will lead him to lewdness, it's the same for women. The same for these young girls. Give her chores in the house. Keep her occupied. Right. Okay? So our mind's not wandering around left and right. Watching these little stupid soap operas and BET, BET and uh, Love and Hip Hop and uh, Atlanta Housewives and all that crap. That puts those thoughts, seeds of corruption in our spirit. Read. Watch over an impudent eye. And marvel not if she trespass against thee. When it says marvel not if she trespass, don't be shocked. You knew in time to come your daughter would trespass against you. Why? Because you gave her too much liberty. You allowed her to do this and do that, go here and there, wherever she wanted to do. Daddy, can I go here? Oh, mom, I want to do, okay, babe, okay, okay. Now she has trespassed against you, okay? How so? How so? Give me for, uh, 42 and 10. Sirach chapter 42 in verse 10. Mm -hmm. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled and gotten with child in her father's house. See that? It's always you women are defiled if you have a child still living at home. You are, de according to God, women are defiled having a child living in their father's house. Where's the baby daddy? He's at home with his mommy. You, sister, you are defiled. Okay, now you, oh, it's massage. It's not misogyny. You're not supposed to carry before you marry. I don't see what's so hard about that. Don't carry the man's child if you're not willing to marry him. You just simple as hell. And if he ain't got his own place, don't go there. But some bishop, some might say, well, what if you marry before you carry and the nigga ain't, nigga ain't SH? They might try that. Remember Sirach 6 and 7, prove him first. Some y'all might argue and try to be sick and go, what if I, what if I marry um, and, then get, and then carry? And he's still wicked. Bible says, prove him first. Do not, don't be hasty to credit him. So it's just the goal is the same way either way. Be mindful of your choices. Yep. Go back to Sirach um, 26. Sirach 26. And 11. Verse 11. Watch over an impudent eye and marvel not if she trespass against thee. Mm-hmm. She and guess what? Let me say this. Let me say it. it's the it's the same thing. You brothers with unbelieving wives, <sighs> she don't do nothing you say. <sighs> I'm trying to see how I say this to be nice. I just gotta say it. You brothers with wait. Let me raise your hand if you brothers have an unbelieving wife at home. Raise your hand. Let me see something. One, two brothers. Okay, only two brothers got an unbelieving wife. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. You got to think about how you met her. Some brothers met their wife in the club. Now, I don't know how they met their wife. I don't know. I'm just talking this way. Some brothers met their wife in the club. Some met her through a girlfriend or whatever, of another family or whatever. And you knew when you met her, she wasn't right. She was that roundaway girl. Now you're sitting around worried. Is this woman that does not believe in God, does she have the spiritual tenacity or spiritual discipline to keep herself, what's the word I want? From going against you sexually. Is she going to keep discipline that she will not commit adultery? These are things you got to think about. Okay? Now watch this. Some of you brothers, some not you two, in, 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 not you two particular, but in general. Some of you, there's brothers online who have unbelief. How do you know if your wife is unbelieving? How many of you, how many wives, wait, watch this. How many brothers married? Raise your hand. Keep your hands up. I'm going to ask a question. How, none of you brothers over there is married? Abby, oh no, Abby's single. Where's that brother right over here? He ain't married? Oh, that's, oh, yeah. Both of you are married. I'm going to ask a question. Keep your hands up. How many of your wives attend class on the regular? Keep your hand up. If your wife attends class 
regular. So you see, some hands come went down. Some hands went down. So y'all all right up there. Okay, so now watch them out to say, y'all can put your hands down now. If your wife is not attending regular, what I mean is, meaning every, everyone knows this sister, she did, I, I ain't talking about the COVID thing. I ain't talking about COVID. I'm talking about, let's say this, take COVID out the way. Nobody hardly sees your wife. She's an unbeliever. Your wife is an unbeliever. And I don't care what job she got, wish, whatever excuse you make for her, you cannot put 100% uh, trust in that woman. You know who you are. Don't nobody know your wife? Yeah, she believes. Where is she at? Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, she's in Mexico. Oh, yeah. She, she, she's part of the cartels. The hell is this? She, El, she, she's chauffeur for El Chapo. The hell is this? Where we at, Officer Leon? Verse 11. Go ahead, read. Watch over an impudent eye and marvel not if she trespass against thee. Don't be shocked if your wife commit adultery against you. Because you know your wife ain't right. We talk about daughters here, but I'm making her older now. Now she your wife. Nobody know her. Nobody hardly see her. And you make all kind of excuses for her. Don't be shocked. If she trespass against you, that's all I'm saying. Read. She will open her mouth as a <laughs> she will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. You see that? Meaning, she, hmm. you know, there's no nice way to say that. She, yeah, fellatio. She's sucking everybody's thing. She at work right now. Yeah, she's at work right now on the Sabbath. As that thirsty traveler, telling you I got to work today. Really? Hey, hey, Bishop. Yeah. He had he had this this um this little sister inside here. Mm -hmm. That couple of young sisters inside here that fit that scripture that we just read. Mm -hmm. And on their job, they giving fellatios to brothers on the job. You know, and this and the ironic thing about it is that you know this one brother wanted to marry the sister, and we told he's a thirst bucket. Hey, Bishop, we told the brother, we said, don't marry the sister. So he, yeah, he left up, he left up out of here with the sister a couple months ago. He, you know what he found out a couple weeks ago? That she, she done, she, she that thirsty traveler. Yeah, she, she, as, as the Bishop said, if you, if you are dealing with a woman that don't believe, guess what? She will step out on you. You know, sis, the little sister stepped out on the brother already. <laughs> yeah, because she, you uh, know, because the brother did not believe this is her business. Right. She went back to do her business. She right. is her business. Yeah, man. So, yo, well, as these scriptures coming out, you brothers learn, man, and take heed to what we are saying. We ain't just talking, talking out of just just talking. You know, we got young sisters go to, go that went to school. When they go to school, they the we got security cameras showing young sisters giving fellatios in school and stuff like that. Young 15, 16 year old sisters that's supposed to be part of the congregation. You understand? These things gotta stop, man. You know, you brothers, you all got daughters like that. You gotta keep them in straight. You can't be playing with these little girls. You Dude. know what I mean? Hey, you remember that little sister that went away? She was 15, 16 years old mm -hmm. and got. And she went to a dude house, the dude had sex with her. Then she called rape. She yeah. came up in there and said she was raped. We said, get the police, you know, you know, and the sister did not want to did not want to say where the um the dude live at and so forth. Get to find out the sister ran away and dealt with, with that grown man. You understand? So these are the things we're dealing with. This is real life stuff we're dealing with. You know, you all got to stop coming up out of La La Land. And you brothers, you got a shameless daughter. Keep her in straight. Sisters, you got a, a shameless daughter. Keep her in straight, man. Don't give her too much liberty. Because the things we're reading about here, we see it happen with sisters. You know, we see sisters True. doing stuff like that. Opening their mouth to every traveler. You mm -hmm. understand? We see them things. So you all take heed, man. Yeah, you remember, uh, D.K. Malachi, you forgot. The mother was saying that, you know what I mean? No, she was not like that. Then you remember in the school, they got the videotape. That's not, she was not doing it to one dude. There was like a line of dudes. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't give the. I mean, you got the. There was a line of dudes you was going in and. Yup, yup, yup. Dudes line up and going in one by one. And she like a thirsty traveler inside there. But didn't some of y'all believe that stuff? Uh, uh, some, hey, uh, we didn't believe that stuff. Bitch. You didn't believe it? Nah, nah, nah. I nah, think nah, one nah, of y'all, nah. was it you believed it? Yeah, he didn't tell you the full story. The mother <laughs> stood it. right here, stood right here and said, My daughter got kidnapped. We said, Sister, what? What happened? My daughter was coming from school. They put a black bag over her head and threw it in the taxi or a van. I said, wait. I saw that movie last night. It was uh, Taken. That's from the movie Taken. What's that dude's name? Leon. Uh, Leon Neeson. She says, no, no. She got kidnapped. They put a bag. They tied the string around her neck, threw her in, tied her. I'm like, hmm, this don't sound right. But I, one of you think, because I think y'all was believing the story. Yo, Bishop, I'll tell her that that's not the first time she did that. She, right. she, she said, no, Deacon, that's the f-. I said, okay, sis. Okay. I said, okay. <laughs> then the next week later, that was not a, a month later, Bishop. Right. The next week later, they caught her in a video. Mm-hmm. She, there was a line of the young dude. You understand? She just told me last week. No, I said, sister, trust me. She did that before. Mm-hmm. She, trying to, she trying to tell me, no, Deacon, not. Okay. Then let the Lord reveal it. Roll that tape, Lord. Roll the tape. Yep. In, in the video, you got the, the dude standing with his hands on his hip like this. And then you see the door. <laughs> yeah. And one brother looking out in the door with her head like this. What the hell is going on here? What is she doing in there? A little nasty self. And you mother trying to uh, hide her. Dude, you little nasty behind out of here. Put that on the screen. <laughs> this is what the scriptures is. Read the scripture again, Officer Leon. Yes, sir. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. Give me the next picture. There, there, go right there. The hell is y'all got to imagine now? It's not a bottle in her mouth. It's it's. Okay. <laughs> Give me the next one. All right, let's focus now. Let's focus now. No, I no. saw something else. Let's focus. No more picture. There's a gift. I like that gift. Put that in. Yeah, go ahead. Put that on the screen. Put it on the Not screen. Don't be don't be scared. Will it go up? Read it again, Officer Liam. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler mm-hmm. when he has found a fountain. Go ahead. And Look drink, at and there, drink there, of there, there every water. Right there. <laughs> there you go. That's it right there. Throat that's baby. that's some of your daughters. Damn. You can't make this stuff up. And see, now we're reading the Bible. You know, a sister got mad and said, uh, she was a Christian. She came and she said, y'all shouldn't be talking about stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you, Christians is the nastiest people you ever meet. Mm-hmm. Yep. We used to go into churches looking for women. Catholic. They nasty in there. Catholics are worse. Catholics are worse, yeah. Because y'all deal with same sex in there too, y'all nasty yeah. selves. Yeah. And children. Right. And children. <laughs> nasty selves. Read it, Alf Leon, where we at? We have verse uh, 12 again. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler when he has found a fountain and drink of every water near her. Drink of every water near... Just be near the hole. <laughs> she thirsty. Go ahead. By every My hedge. mouth is parched. Mm. I need something to quench my thirst. That's the hole. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. To the window. Oh, By every hedge... Will she sit down? By every hedge will she sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Open her va- vagina. You know, a woman walked out here because I said some sisters got parachute vaginas. Got mad and left. A brother got mad and left. He said, Bishop said some sisters got a parachute for JJ. Some of them do. Flapping in the wind. <laughs> it's used and abused. Hey, yeah, hey, uh, Bishop, 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 why you think we send that give give her a year, two years to heal? Let her heal, she right? to hey, be healed. Hey, Bishop, they get mad at that, but in Proverbs, the scripture said, a hoe is a deep ditch. 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 Right. What's that? That's parachute vagina. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. The thing is like a, a canyon. Go ahead. <laughs> we get Proverbs 30 and 20. It says the same thing. Those see travelers written um, in here also. Well, Solomon speaks on it. 
The book of Proverbs, chapter 30, and verse 20. 20. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. Mm -hmm. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no wickedness. See, same thing. She eateth, wipeth her mouth and saith, I've done no wickedness. What I do? What's wrong with what I'm doing? What's wrong with what I'm doing? Nothing. Same thing. Exactly. Get Ezekiel 16, 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. Y'all see that? Abundance of idleness. The Lord is getting on the Israelites, okay? And he's calling Israelites, it said to what? Thy sister, Sodom, thy sister. Go ahead. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, foolish, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Was in her and in her daughters. Go ahead. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. She didn't give a daggone about the poor, the spiritually poor of Israel or the needy. Her whole thing was about, see the part fullness of bread? It was about her. Feed her, take care of her. But then it adds to that. Abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Idle, idle, idle time. Never have time for the Lord. Never at all. And some of you brothers marry some of these types of sisters. Now, I'm going to show you another thing. I'm going to show you a video about a young woman. Teens make terrible mothers. Now, I'm going to say this thing right here. Black Hebrew Israelites say that teenagers are the best mothers. They say Mary was a young girl. She might have been 13, which I, I don't believe that at all. Mm-hmm. All these young girls, they say all of the girls was young. Here's a teenager. Let's watch this video. Let's watch this video. Mistakes happen as parents. And I'm a teen mother. Teen moms are terrible parents. This is what happened with teen. This is what happens to teen mothers. Constantly flirting with my boyfriend, and she did it for literally months. Like he would change her diaper. She would be flirting with him. And right, pause it. I want you to understand. Like, She's talking about her little baby daughter flirting with her boyfriend. The, the, the baby she'll say is like I believe four months old. And she's, her mind is, I think my child is flirting with my boyfriend. This is a teenage girl now, mentally jacked up, this girl. Play. Yeah, they got to let that marinate. Yeah, you got to let that marinate in your brain. They didn't get that. Right. Well, wait, 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 pause. What'd you say? Right, say it on the mic. I remember her name, but that's her name. That happened in here. Um, a sister had accused... Uh, a brother who was with her at the time for, for messing with his two year old mm-hmm. for one year she could barely speak and she said that her daughter told her daughter told her that he touched her and she could barely speak and people were believing it right. people believed her it's a retarded mm-hmm. said over time go back to the beginning of that mm-hmm. mistakes happen as parents and I'm a teen mother teen moms are terrible parents this is what happened with teen this is what happens to teen mothers. Constantly flirting with my boyfriend and she did it for literally months. Like he would change her diaper, she would be flirting with him and literally just like looking at him, basically trying to get him to touch on her. So she was flirting with him for a really long time. Um, When she was four months old, that's when they finally had sex. She lost her virginity. And after that, she basically had sex with my boyfriend, and that's when it all went downhill. That's when I was like, you know what, this bitch already got me in trouble with the law. She's sleeping with my boyfriend. So, when she was four months, that's when they finally had sex. And that's when I was like, all right, you want to be a little slut? Then you we gonna, we gonna benefit, mama gonna benefit off of you being a slut. So... I started making some money off this little hoe, so she wanted to be a little dirty ass little hoe. So I started pimping her out. I started making money off of it. Um, I want to make sure I don't miss nothing in this story because I don't want to talk about this no more after this. So I started pimping her out. I started making that change. I started making that little money off that little hoe. So 
I was getting paid big bucks. Men were paying like three hundred a piece. Some of these men were paying three hundred a piece, close to five hundred a piece, just to get some pussy from that hoe. Cora was a really pretty young lady. I'll give her that. She was a really pretty young lady. She was thick. She had hips. She had a big booty. So all the men was loving her. They was they was breaking. She was breaking in some cash at one point. She was she was that hoe was paying the rent. So I was like, well, I do have a cause for her now. Now she can make me some money or whatever. So I started making money off that bitch and. I'm sorry, y'all. I feel like I get emotional talking about my daughter because I do miss her. Rest in peace. I do miss her. But I started making money off of her or whatever. Um, I did get sick of Cora eventually. She was always around. She was irritating me. Um, my family started watching her less because they had stuff to do. They had to go to work. Um, they wanted to go out. They're getting older. They wanted to go out. So I did start to get sick of her. And I decided that I wanted to get rid of her for good. But what I meant by that is that I wanted to sell her into sex trafficking to get her out of my hair. I started meeting up with pimps. Um, I had people that would buy her for a certain amount of time. And I was working with other pimps. And I was trying to sell her into sex, tra sex trafficking completely. But we were trying to get to a certain price and making sure that I get paid off. Because that's my fucking property. So I want to make sure that I got paid off at least enough money for you to keep her for good. But we were still talking about pricing or whatever. And Cora passed away not long before her birthday. So she was going to be sold. Like probably on her birthday she was going to be sold. But unfortunately she didn't make it that far. And let me tell y'all what happened. And this is where I'm getting through. So I was going to sell her into sex trafficking. I was making a good amount of money off of her. Um, I had people that was working with me that was helping me find clients because he didn't want the police to get onto what we was doing. And, you know, you can easily meet somebody that's pretending to be a client. And then there's people out there who don't know how to mind their own business. So they're going to try and call the police or whatever. So that's why I was working with actual pimps um, who actually already had regular clients that they knew wasn't going to snitch. So I actually did need a business partner, and I had one, but I feel like Cora, she probably could have been worth a lot. I could have actually had so much if it wasn't for what happened, but she just had to, she had to catch the attitude. She had to get smart with her mouth. Um, I did used to beat Cora a lot. I used to punch her, kick her, all type of shit, put her on the floor, step on her legs on purpose when nobody else was home, and... Eventually, my punishments did start to get a lot harsher. I'll admit that. My punishments got a lot harsher than they used to be. So, I used to run really hot bath water, which I actually posted a video of some of these actions. Um, some people have it. It doesn't matter. It does not matter. It was in the past. I did post a video of me slapping her once. I deleted it. A few people got it. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. It's over with. Um, I posted a video of her in the bathtub. I, I used to run really, really hot bath water, and I would let her sit there for a little while. Um, I used to pour bleach on her, but not that much, because like I said, you ain't trying to get arrested, you know, you ain't trying to have all these marks on your child's body, but I was at one point, I was going to kill her um, intentionally, because I didn't kill her intentionally, but I was going to kill her intentionally, but I didn't know that I could make a lot of money off of her, so eventually, since I wasn't going to kill her, my punishments got a little rough, I will put her in hot scalding water, throw Clorox, throw Clorox on her, um, I'll pinch her really hard, harder than I used to, because I used to just pinch like, this even hurts me, so I can only imagine, <laughs> but my punishments got pretty bad to the point where I was putting her in hot scalding water and basically just torturing her, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed watching her get fucked a lot of times. I would actually smile as she would get fucked and I could see the pain in her eyes. She would look at me with so much pain and fear in her eyes. And all I would do is just smile. I was like, like, bitch, your mom not gonna help you hope. Don't be calling on mommy for help. Mom don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> so, I didn't give a fuck. I said, keep raping that little hoe. So, I was like... And eventually these messages went viral, so I don't really want to get into that. But I did post messages about what was going on and what I was doing. And it kind of blew up. And I was not expecting that because my account was on private. But then again, you know, a lot of people don't know how to mind their own fucking business. So since people don't know how to mind their own fucking business, some of my personal messages with the pimp got out and went viral. You can, you, you can literally find them anywhere. They're, those messages are literally 
everywhere. They're everywhere. They're on Google. So I'm not going to pull them up because I don't really give a fuck. It was a long time ago. It, it's on the internet, so why should I show them? So anyways, my pro my personal messages with the pimp eventually went viral. Some of my personal messages, personal phone calls. Um, I was able to get myself out of trouble with that, and I eventually continued doing what I was doing. Um, basically, Cora was going to make me rich, and... <sighs> We got into it so bad one day. We was arguing. And. I mean. She deserves it. a second. It, so pause, I mean, pause, pause, pause. I can't watch no more. Pause, pause it for a second. I used to work in this field. Two hospitals in New York. And I used to see this. I used to hear stuff like this. This is absolutely sickening. Uh, go ahead with the class, Bishop. This is just crazy. But for some reason, you got camps that think teenagers make good mothers. She had a, you could tell she's uh, mentally something wrong. Either she had a traumatic experience, exactly. but her mind has snapped. It's snapped. And, really? and this is why and in the teenage years, it's very got to be very delicate around those ages. And you notice that she was going in and out. That's like a bipolar thing. She was at one moment, she was saying how glad she was. And then you saw the remorse. So she was going backwards and forwards. Exactly. Now, and, and unfortunately, we get some, some of these sisters, like very similar to her, will come into this truth. And some of them laugh for a while, but some of them, they, they don't. Some of them don't. They have these relapses. Like, uh, remember the sister stood up? Remember that sister stood up and said, uh, she said, you told her to... Uh, yeah. You may, I forgot, don't mention her name. She hallucinated yeah. that you told her to commit adultery. He was, everybody was like, what? when did this happen? It was something crazy as hell. We had to put out. That's Abiel's friend. It was a friend of him. Crazy, these crazy women that come up in it. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them ain't right. A lot of BHIs, they marry these so-called married these sisters. Right. They take advantage of the sisters that have mental issues. That's why you never see these wives. Mm -hmm. You never see them. A lot of them be like, a lot of them be like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Yeah, exactly. sister, sister don't have no legs. This brother tell her, tell her sister that for her to make it in the kingdom, she have to marry him. For her, for him to teach her the scripture, that's the only way she's going to make it to the kingdom. Sister says she don't have no bottom and not whatsoever. This is the reason why, like you were saying earlier, Bishop, about the rules that we set up. Because some, a spirit like that can be dormant. And you're trying to find out about this, about this spouse to be. You want to you figure all that out. You don't want to be rushing into that thing. Because right. that'll be hiding. And when the scriptures say, be not uh, hasty to credit him, what stops you from crediting them is discipline. Discipline enough to find out the real deal. And people, people's lusts get in the way of the discipline and they rush into it and then they end up with this. Remember there was a sister, with a married sister with a husband. She woke, I'm trying to get the story right. If y'all remember, help me out. The sister woke up and she said, Jesus told me to kill our daughter. The husband jumps up, grabs the baby. This, this was like a couple of months ago. Y'all know the story I'm talking about? Y'all know the story I'm talking about? Yeah, you know the story? Do you remember what happened? I might be forgetting some of the details. But she said, Jesus told me to kill the baby. He grabbed the baby, took her to the, the mother to the psych ward. Then they let her out. She said, I'm all right now. I just, you know, she suffers from, um, I think it's bipolar or schizophrenia, one of those two. But the husband never knew. They, got, they get home, and they're sitting in the car, and he's trying to talk to his wife about how she's feeling, what's going on. And she said, because uh, he said he never knew she suffered from schizophrenia. The brother tells him that ran in their family on the women's side. Whole background. The brother came. But the, the husband should have met, he should have met the brother. You, that's what, y'all meet some of these sisters or vice, meet the family. See what kind of stock they come from. See if, cause that's what you got to ask, are you on medication? And if so, what type? Are you on psych meds? Because this sister was on psych meds and she stopped taking them. From the time they got married, she stopped taking her medication. And, she, and the devil was all on her. Then he said, the next day, she says, I don't know, but I got this feeling. I want to go see my mother. 
and Jesus is telling me not only to kill the baby, but to kill you too. I got to go. I'm gone. I'm ghost. We are out the door. I'm not listening to that. And some, and this is, um, this well, I don't know if they're still with us, but this was a married couple. And you get these people, they, their mind, and, and, and they'll try to say it's leadership right. fault. How is it our fault that she suffers from schizophrenia? Right. Bishop, yeah. I'm going to tell you how. Because there's black Hebrew Israelites that watch us, watch us, that stay on social media, and they look for anything to exploit. Remember the other situation? We had another situation down south of a brother that was suffering with mental issues. And something transpired, and he got arrested. Who was the first person talking about it? Of a black Hebrew Israelites. So me, I told everybody, stay quiet. Let's let them run with the story, because I was already in contact with the family, and I know the whole thing. And I wanted to see how far they want to go with it before I could embarrass them. Luckily, the family got uh, legal representation, and the brother's getting help now. But the brother stopped taking his meds because he heard the truth. He came into the truth. We were exhorting him with the spirit, with his spirit. So he went a long time without taking the meds. And then after a while, the, his illness overcame him, and he got in trouble with law enforcement. He relapsed. Right. What's we the need- first thing those niggas on Facebook and, and, and those other camps? Right away, IUHC member this and that and bringing everything and putting up there. I just I was sitting back waiting for the right time, okay. But because of the family getting involved and them stopping everything and shutting everything down and trying to get local media involved to say that he was a, with a black uh, separatist group, man, I was waiting, rubbing my hands together, and but we, nothing right. came from it. Deacon, and we never tell anybody to stop taking their meds. That's right. They have, they all, that's not what we do. We don't, we don't have get, the, we legal don't have right the authority to, to get into or the legal right to get involved okay. in anything like that. And we're not stupid. So, um, that sister got a bunch of pages, right? And she's yeah, her own YouTube channel. She got her own YouTube her own channel. YouTube channel. She's bugged she, out she on bugged, every video. She's talking yeah, madness. Bugged out. So when, when we try to tell you, brothers and sisters, that uh give me the Hebrews 13 4. You know our favorite scripture. You know Hebrews 13 4. Marriage is an honorable thing, okay? But take your time. Right. The book take, of, take, it, take your time. Go ahead. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge. Whoremong- you know what falls under whoremongers? Prostitutes. <laughs> I don't see why some people can't understand that. Prostitution falls under whoremongers. Yeah, and adultery. And adultery. What is wrong with these brothers saying prostitution is good? Asaph, I just brought out the camp that says you can, <laughs> it's prostitution is lawful to God. Hey, Bishop, they have no shame. They're saying it openly. In this day and age, while people are sick, dying, losing their job, everything, all they're teaching with them saying that they have 100% truth is that you could deal with prostitutes. My question is this. If you could deal with prostitutes, are you going to make them of your own nation? Are you going to take your own sisters who the Lord told you to preach the gospel to and turn them into prostitutes? Or are you going to commit fornication with the other nations and lay with them? And the scriptures tell us not to do that and give many examples of us falling, great men falling for dealing with the other nations. They won't answer that, but they'll go into history of our forefathers who were in sin when they did it. Our forefathers were in sin when they did that. Okay, so that's what they like to do. Go to the Old Testament to see when our forefathers was in sin and try to implement that now when we're trying to rebuild our people as a nation and help them with the things that are wrong. How could you sit before someone with a Bible open and listen to them and entertain them? Because you got the damn devil on you. And that's what the Lord is showing us. He's showing us there's good in our people and he's showing that there's manipulative, evil, black, demonic, Hebrew, Israelite men. Right, and what's crazy is What's crazy is the, the bishop I may mention. Hey, like, if prostitution, what's stopping them from sleeping with the baby of nothing. this girl that was just on the right. screen? Where do you draw the line? And the bishop I may mention um, in class about how sisters should, you know, um, basically please that man, or whatever. And people went crazy. He said jelly. Oh wait, my wait, God! Wait, 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 wait. And then you mentioned. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me explain that because they don't understand what you're right. talking about. Let me explain that. 
the bishop did a class. It wasn't his regular uh, weekend Sabbath class today. I think it was a Friday. Yeah. He was with the men. It was New Year's. Yeah, so you. it's all of us. It's fi- we all speak in men here, us, our private class on our IUIC. What do you have of a black Hebrew Israelite cats that says they're home of the truth and they're number one? They're watching. They watch every single thing the bishop says. And as soon as they could catch something to manipulate it, boy, did they do it. <laughs> you had niggas who brag about their home of the truth since 1969, sitting in their car telling people, press one if you want to hear Bishop Nathaniel say, put jelly on it. We here laughing because these guys brag that they're home of the truth. That's something that you see. You ever see those gossiping sisters on YouTube with their page with the T saying they got T? He looked like one of them girls. And he's saying that we the girl. You in your car talking about car chronicles saying press one if you want to see a clip of the Bishop Nathaniel saying put jelly on it. And all the Bishop was explaining was he said it clear. If you are in your relationship or you and your wife doing that, then she does research and says, I'm not doing it no more. The Bishop made a joke. I said, you're going to do it and put jelly on it while you're doing it to enjoy it. We all here laughing. But to them, it's like, oh, we got him. We finally got him. We now need this to prove that we are the home of the truth. The bishop said, put jelly on it. Do you want to hear it? That was a big deal to them. Those, we can't respect people like that. You a loser. If all you're doing, you're sitting back. You bragging that you're home of the truth since 1969 and you in our class watching the bishop trying to take anything that you could cut and copy and paste and manipulate. That's all we've been seeing since we've been growing. We can't respect men like that or go back and forth with men like that. You just showing how childish and insignificant you are. But that's what the Don is bringing out. Right. He's not there. Then you had another cap say that the bishop must want multiple wives now. Then you had another cam rip the video. It's like three different cams rip the video with three different ideologies and thought processes. What is it behind it? Jealousy jelly. and evil. Oh, no, jelly's behind it. <laughs> jelly, jelly, jelly. <laughs> we laughing jelly. at you. We're laughing at all of you. We laughing because the Most High is showing us how weak and insignificant you are. You're acting like you don't know who we are, but at the same time, you all in the jelly. <laughs> right. So on that note, put, put the, some bishop, jelly. the bishop mentioned the jelly thing, and then but you have camps talk about prostitution is biblical, and no one's addressing that. Nobody does a video the about in that. in the room, and they're ignoring the elephant. Wait, 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 on the jelly. wait, wait. We got to give credit. Shaka did attack the prostitution thing. Wow. He did. So I got to give Shaka some credit. He may be waking up. Hey, 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 who is who is shocked here? Nobody know who is. Nobody know that do this. Hey, so <laughs> so the, our point is, man, when you brothers or sisters, when y'all decide to get married, take your time, prove the person, get to know them, get to learn them, their ups and downs, get to know their character, get to know what kind of skills they got. Cause some, believe it or not, some, all women, all women don't got skills. Some women, the only skill they got is making it clap. That's it. What do you know how to do? I can make it clap. What the hell is this? That's all you know how to do? One brother got married, said, hey. No, he had a backdoor marriage. He comes in here mad. This is a couple years back. He runs in here mad as hell. I'm sick of this. What's, bro, what's wrong? Calm down. I'm sick of McDonald's every night. Mm. You're worth another cook. That shit don't know how to cook. You didn't know that before you met her? We told you that sister didn't know how to cook. And, and here's another thing. When your brother's talking to a sister, see if she's in, see if she's involved in the Titus too. Mm-hmm. If she has no senior sister that's guiding her as a single woman, I'm, there's red flags right there. If her whole crew is teeny boppers, and when I mean say teeny bopper, her whole circle is lo- young little girls here who don't know nothing. She's not around the senior women at all. She don't talk with them. It's just shalom. How you doing? And that's it. Don't marry those women. Don't marry those young girls like that. I'm telling you, all I could do is warn y'all because she's carrying a lot of baggage of evil in her. Ecclesiastes. Start at one. Let's start at one. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 and verse one. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone and everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. So lazy brothers. Some of you sisters, you see a brother in here you like, you're going to find out some of them might be lazy as hell. Go ahead. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Dunghill is a pile of doo-doo. 
That's how some lazy brothers are. You marry a dude, and, and then you find out when he does get up at 12 noon, he's playing video games. He ain't up early in the morning to crack a door and looking for work. Mm-mm. He ain't interested about even being an entrepreneur. He just wants to play. Be- like the video we saw earlier, he said just uh, dog d- dog out and just stay there. Post, post up. up. Never, never leave. Post up. Never leave. And then you tell this dude is a bum. He's lazy. He he's don't a, want to work. Bishop, he's a professional. He's a bum bumologist. Exactly. He has a degree <laughs> in bumology. <laughs> Go ahead. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. It's like if you touch a dude and you ah oh, shoot, you're trying to sn- snap that doodle off your hand. That's how a lazy brother is. Go ahead. An evil. Nurtured son is the dishonor of his father that begat him. Right, go ahead. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. You see that part? And it says an evil nurtured son is the dishonor of his father that begat him. And a foolish daughter is born to his loss. Watch the next part. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. So when you brothers meet a young lady, I don't care what age she is, whatever age your age group is, what is she bringing to the table? What is what kind of skills does she have? What know-how does she have? These that's what says a wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband. She has to bring something to the table. What does she know how to do? Go ahead. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. You see that? But she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. Go ahead. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. To be bold means to be bold against the word of God and to be bold against you. She's a disgrace. That's what it's saying. She that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband. Go ahead. But they both shall despise her. The father will hate his daughter and the husband will hate his wife. Why? Because she's bold against God. She's bold against what the scriptures teach her to do. She don't want to do it. Okay. Bishop, remember we saw that here. A sister came to the table and said, I'm not listening to no man. Right, exactly. Okay, because yeah. her, she, she was never instructed by her father. Now we're thinking, okay, you have a husband now, he can speak to you. And you're like, I'm not listening to him either. Yeah. Okay, then when you tell them that that's hatred, they get mad. It's in the scriptures. A people eventually are going to hate you. You may be trying to get right, but because it's just like Miriam, why did God have to step in and sprinkle leprosy on her? She wouldn't listen to her father. She wouldn't listen to the men around her. The Lord says, this woman needs to be stopped. And you have a lot of sisters in this truth like that. They think just because they have the liberty to guide abroad and run their mouth, that nobody can touch them until something go wrong. Get us uh, Ecclesiastes 25 and 1. Ecclesiastes 25 and 1. In three things, I was beautified. And stood up beautiful both before God and men. The unity of brethren. So that's one of the most beautiful things to the most high. The unity of brethren. We're going to come back to this one later on. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. See, and the first thing the man and wife got to agree upon is the word of God. If you can't agree with that, then don't marry her or don't marry him. Okay. Watch this. Give me um, Matthew 19 and 5. Matthew chapter 19 and 5. And said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And they twain shall be one flesh. And they twain shall be one flesh. I'm laughing because in a prostitute video, they try to say that uh, it's talking about idolatry where it says the two shall be one flesh. I said, these dudes are stupid as hell. They use the one in Corinthians. I did laugh. But the point is about becoming one flesh, meaning one mind. Y'all got to be on one accord. That's what it's saying. Watch this. Matthew 12, 25. Now, here's the flip side of that. Here's the flip side of being on one accord. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house Divided against itself shall not stand. So what we want to focus on now is that part about house, every house divided against itself shall not stand. Some of you brothers are divided against your wife. Some of you wives are divided against your husband. You're not on one accord. You are, that marriage is not going to stand. 
No ma- brothers, no matter how much you try to hide her. Notice only two brothers raised their hand and said they got unbelieving wives. There's but more. there's more. There's more in here. You're trying. But we, one, two, three, four, five, six, six brothers up here. We ain't dumb. We see. You got captains on the side. And the question comes up about bro- how's the brother's wife? Is she or she in the truth? Now, we know COVID's around, so we had to cut things short. But these are things we discuss because how your wife is will give us a better understanding of how you are. Like when I met the deacons, I said, I want to meet your wives. Why? I said, because brothers talk a good talk, but the wife will reveal the real you. Okay? Like when you meet some brother's wife, you got to say, shh, when you get there, don't talk. Don't. Why? Because she's going to say some stuff, and it's going to open the, uh, the, the Pandora's box with you. Like, for example, just for example, just, I'm only going to give an example. The sisters go out on the Daughters of Sarah thing to the restaurant. The women go out to eat. Sister goes, married sister stands up and goes, let me show y'all. Don't, <laughs> don't make a video, Bishop. Okay, don't <laughs> Just do say video. it. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 explicit act was displayed. Put it that way. <laughs> she had to show them how to give a proper... Thing. Pleasure, pleasure, their husband. Yes, <laughs> in public, and the restaurant people—they come with the trailer. Everybody's like, "What the hell?" Here she get, and she got her fringes on, her border blue. How you say, bottom of blue ribbon, bottom of blue. Yeah, it's crazy, insane. You know who you is. Don't deny it. But anyway, a house—if your family is divided—is going to fall. That's the point. The husband and wife must be on one accord. With what the Word of God says. Watch this. Proverbs fourteen one. Proverbs 14 and 1. Mm-hmm. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Every wise woman buildeth her house. The first thing she builds her house with is what this, the, on the foundation of the scriptures. Go ahead. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. The foolish. Imagine here you putting brick upon brick trying to get your house together. Here comes this foolish woman. Every brick you put, every for every two bricks you put up, I'm going to take down three. That's a foolish woman. She is destroying the house from within. And Bishop, let me just explain to you what the Bishop means. Remember the scriptures say that we're lively stones building a house. So the bricks are spiritual. Like for instance, a brother got a good reputation with us, but every time his wife's name comes up, spiritually he can't grow or no one respects him where he could be respected. And then when you're telling his wife, she's like, well, I did nothing wrong. I, I didn't do nothing. All she got is a long explanation. You got 10 people explaining to your sister. Check your spirit. Your husband got a good name. We want him to rise up. When he grows, you grow. When he got the kingdom, you get the kingdom. All she care about is defending herself and she don't care how bad he looks. That's what the bishop means about the brick situation. He's building his name and honor and in pushing his truth. She's taking all the bricks down and she don't care. She'll destroy the whole building. Like Gene Hackman in Enemy of the State. Remember what he would have said? <laughs> Why did you blow up the building? Because you made a phone call. <laughs> she don't even care. You cannot argue or go back and forth with people like that. I said, this here, I'm not doing that. And it's sad because the brother got a good spirit. He's trying. And just like the bishop said, she don't care about nothing, nobody. Everybody was wrong. And she'll argue and argue and argue and be like, next, next nigga to argue. Next nigga to argue. So you just got to spot that and be like, yo, this is the devil right here. And do just what Christ said. Get thee behind me, Satan. For you save us, not the things that are of the Lord. Get that in Proverbs eleven twenty nine. Proverbs 11 and 29. He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. You know what it means? Inherit the wind. You come back to nothing. The furniture's gone. The baby gone. The dog gone. The cat gone. The fish bowl too. Everything gone. And we've had situations like that. Brother arguing with his wife. He says, oh, why don't you just get out? She says, you want me to get out? He says, yeah, take all your SH too. She goes, okay. He says, I'm going to work. He goes to work. He comes home. Then the bed is gone because she paid for that. The kitchen table gone. She paid for that. The TV gone. She paid for that. The doorknob gone because she paid for that too. Curtains. Curtains was gone. Everything was gone. Because everything was in her name. She paid for everything. And the sister didn't want to leave. 
Exactly. Okay, but she was like, okay, you want to test me? You want to test me? Everything's gone now. Your house is empty. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Get a, uh, Ciroc. Well, did you finish that? He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be servant to the wise of heart. And that's why, you know what? He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind. Some of you brothers with unbelieving wives, you are afraid to put your foot down because you, you and you're, look, you're looking at this. See, if I tell my wife to keep the commandments, I'm going to inherit the wind. That's not the trouble that this is talking about. This is talking about a Negro. This here in verse 29 is talking about you doing evil. Now, the one for you, brothers, who have unbelieving wives, the answer for you, you got this two scriptures. You got Ecclesiastes 7.26. Give me that one. I know what you're afraid of. I know what you're afraid of. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. You brothers know that that's your wife. Her heart is snares and traps. She's evil. Go ahead. She don't believe. Go ahead. And her hands as bands. Hands because she's trying to keep you from the word of God. Why you got to get into that Bible? Go ahead. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. So now you got a decision. If you want to please God, the Bible says escape from her. That's if you want to please the Lord. That ain't how you right. That's the, Bible. That's the Bible. Go ahead. But the sinner. But the sinner. This is how we know some of you brothers ain't right. Not only will you never confess your wife is the devil, you hide the wind, and it says, but what? But the sinner shall be taken by her. That's the brother that hides her. I'm not going to say nothing, and you, leadership, y'all don't see nothing. You don't see nothing in my house, and because you don't mention it, it's all good. It's all gravy. But the Bible calls you brothers, what it call y'all? Hello? Sinners. Even if you're in this truth, you are still a, you're in the midst of sin because you will not pass judgment in your house. Now, hey, and mm -hmm. Bishop, you know what's crazy about that? Now that we've experienced that, new sisters will come in and see how fake he is. Right. And then challenge us because they say, yeah, you know that his wife is evil. We've seen her evil. Y'all telling me y'all don't see it and I just got here? So that's why we have to be so vocal about what I say. When new people come in and they got beef with your wicked wife or they're feeling the evil just coming off of her like fumes. And they're like, I'm new. I just got here. I don't know about this Israelite stuff, but I know she's the devil because I have the devil on me. <laughs> I know she's the devil. <laughs> so I'm going to wait to see if these big, strong leaders here can see what I see because I see the damn devil. I know him. I wake up to him every morning. Okay, so that's why we got to be so vocal about what we're saying. He may be imagining in his head he could cover it up and he could hide it, but the Bible says it's like trying to hide the wind. Yep. Exactly. You're good. Give, give me um, Proverbs 30 again. Verse 21. Get the definition of odious, please. Definition of odious. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 21. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which is which it cannot bear. Earth means disquieted means that it causes discomfort, it disturb, it causes disturbance, it causes disruption. Read on. For a servant when he reigneth, one, and a fool when he is filled with meat, two. Verse three. For an odious woman when she is married, there. For an odious woman when she is married, that disquiets things. What's an odious woman? Extremely odious. unpleasant. <laughs> Repulsive. <laughs> Repulsive. <laughs> you just send them please for the uh, odious wife? Wow. Revolting. Y'all married to this. Revolting, repulsive, repellent, repugnant, disgusting, offensive, objectionable. Uh, objectionable. Vile, foul, abhorrent, loathsome, no. nauseating, nauseous, sickening, hateful, detestable. Excrable, damn, abominable, monstrous. monstrous, and those women bring forth monstrous children, okay? Appalling, reprehensible, reprehensible, deplorable, insufferable, intolerable, unacceptable, despicable, contemptible, beyond the pale, unspeakable, poisonous. That girl's poison. Noxious, obscene, base, hideous, grisly, gruesome. 
horrendous, heinous, atrocious, awful, terrible, dreadful, frightful, obnoxious, unsavory, unplatable, unpleasant, disagreeable, nasty, distasteful, off-putting, displeasing. Oh, the book part is brought out says dislikable. Dis yeah, I didn't dislikable, off-putting, displeasing, ghastly, horrible, horrid, gross, putrid, sick-making, yucky, god-awful, beastly, Damn. bogging, skanky, noisome, disgustful, scurvy, lowly. So that's a backdoor marriage wife. That's you, that you bring you bring that in here, and it disquiets everything. It disquiets sisters on this side. It disrupts things. Or you can't control your wife. That's what that is also. She's arguing with sisters back and forth. Sisters can't talk to her. She find a reason. Well, I don't understand what you're saying, but I got a grudge, I have a grudge against you. They hold on to things. They file everything. That's a odious woman. There are many of you in here who hide your hands are married to an odious woman, and through that you disquiet things. That the earth says the earth is disquieted by that. Hey, That's you why just I try made, to hide it. You try to hide it, right? You just made history with that word, because never have I seen a word come up with so many synonyms. <laughs> I would have ran out. But look, what's the first one? It says revolting. That's why I tell the men from now on, if the usually when the sisters giving so much trouble through all the lower leadership. And then they make it up to the table and they're challenging the upper leadership. That's why it says revolting. Because she has a history of fighting everybody to get her way. She's going to revolt. She don't care what scripture you pull. Right. She does not. She got nine more that don't even fit her argument that she's going to use. Because her spirit is revolting. And that's why it says, what does it say? It disquiets everything. Yeah. One more, Bishop. One more. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Rock 42 and 6. This goes back to an odious woman again. And this is for you. Well, read verse 1 for those who try to hide it. Because you're ashamed of it. So you try to hide it. You're ashamed of it. Verse so, 1. It's so Rock 42 and verse 1. Then we're going to jump to verse 6. Yes, sir. Of these things be not thou ashamed, and accept no person to sin thereby. So of these things be not thou ashamed. Jump to verse 46. Sure keeping is good. Sure keeping, meaning maintaining. This is good. Go ahead. Where an evil wife is, where an e sure keeping is good. Where an evil wife is, I mean, you keep her out of here till you get her in order. Sure keeping is good. Where an evil wife is, go ahead and shut up. Go ahead. Where many hands are, and shut up where many hands are. I mean, you don't. She's not around, sisters. You gotta keep. You gotta keep. Put her line first. Check her first. You gotta check her first. Some of you brothers are married to sisters and they're out of control. You bring them in here and make them want us to fix them. No, that ain't our job. That's your job. And we try to step in, then all of a sudden, guess what? You turn against us. Because you can't handle your woman. We see that happen to an elder in here. It happened to captains in here who are no longer in the body. For that same reason. They can't handle her and they get mad. Anybody else who tries to. If I can't handle her, no one else can handle her. Leave her alone. She's holy. We're all holy. And we're all safe as long as we leave her alone. Because she's scary at home. It's like what the bishop said with the kids earlier. You ever see those parents that they'll bring their kids here and their child has to stay right beside? All the other kids are playing, but their child got to stay right beside them. Because you know if you let that kid loose, nine parents are going to be complaining about that child. Okay, I see that in here. You see some kids, everybody else is playing, but the little kid is mean mugging right next to their moms. Their moms can't even talk with the other sister. They got to keep an eye on that demon. Okay, so that's why it says sure keeping. You know in the house how that child behaves. And you know if you let that child talk and open their mouth, they're going to be like, your house is out of order. And this is why. So that's why the bishop will say, look, we pop get your kid here. We'll discipline your kid. Okay? Because we aren't expecting for your child to come here disciplined. Nobody should have to check him here. Okay? I know even what my parents were not in the truth. When I was doing something wicked, I was looking at my mom's to see if she got her shoe in her hand. Frying pan or pot or whatever. I know it was coming for me because there was at least discipline with her. But how could you be in this truth, reading the scriptures and learning the closest things to develop a human being in a young mind, and you can't unleash your kid on society? How are you going to deal with them when they get older? You can't follow them to the workplace, to the relationship, to everything else. It's because you're a bad parent and you won't admit it. Just like the bad husband that won't admit, he needs to check his wife.
Sirach, chapter 27 and 3. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord, his house shall soon be overthrown. So in this truth, we got to hold ourselves diligent. With, and that dil holding ourselves diligent goes back to the discipline we were reading earlier in the scriptures. Many a marriage has been disrupted and destroyed because the man did not hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord. And the wife sees it. So this guy is doing A, B, and C here, right? For example, for example, sister uh, and brother get married. They've been married for a couple of months. Of course, it was a black door marriage, black door. And the wife comes home and the brother, and not even this was a shock to me, he's smoking crystal meth in the house. It got so bad, she says. She said it drove her to going back to smoking weed. But had she taken the time to prove this dude, she would have known he had some kind of substance addiction. But he just looked so handsome to her. And she just wanted the dang-a-lang, the dang lang dang a lang She just wanted that thing. So sometimes you destroy your marriages by introducing. <laughs> Bishop, she caught him with the crack pipe. He looked at her, for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> Till death do us part. <laughs> Cause he already know. He read the scriptures. He knows she can't leave. He's not gonna stop smoking crack. That's why you sisters gotta check before you put your neck out there. You know, uh, a brother will hire a year bishop. He will hire good behavior. He gonna do a lot of work because he know what he expected. For after the work, he gonna become the demon on earth. Then that's why even though a year times, if they uh you know, like you said earlier, a year is just like it's so short. Then when you you just get in for three months, you're talking about you ready to get married to show how sick we are as a people. A year, a guy can play a whole year. He playing the good guy the whole year. But after the year, because you never you never proved that guy, you never asked the right questions. Now, I mean, now he's inside the crib now doing that type of drugs. It's guaranteed he's gonna beat the hell out of you. <laughs> There's no if or maybe. You understand? But you're, again, we stupid here. You smarter. Exactly. Now, sometimes, brothers and sisters, you destroy your marriages when you introduce new things into the relationship. You might introduce new people, places, or things into the relationship and destroy everything. Now, I think I put maybe five marriages. I'm five for five, brothers. I am five. Thank the Lord. I praise the Lord. I think I... Well, who, who, Captain Yana got him and his wife together. Captain Joel, who else was there? Who else? There's three more. Oh, Callie was two. Oh, Jeraham, right? That one. I'm five for five. I'm doing good. No, Only time two. things mess up is when you, you men want to bring, I, I give an example. Here's one guy messing up. He got an unbelieving daughter in the world. He decides he's going to bring his unbelieving daughter into his new marriage. All hell broke loose in the house. She don't want to eat that food. She don't want no organic nothing. She want her pork. She want her bur And it brought chaos to the house. And the husband's trying to protect his daughter over his new wife. That's a mistake, brothers. That is a big mistake. And I ain't talking about she's a little girl. She's 20 years old. Let her stay wherever the hell she was. All now she's coming. No, I don't, I'm not wearing no dress. I ain't covering my head. Now all hell's breaking loose enough. Husbands trying to make excuses. That's crazy. We used to scream black power while heroin was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.